Ready for Big East basketball. And for St. John's and Providence, this will be the 93rd meeting. For St. John's, they've played Villanova more at a 100 meetings and 96 for Niagara. Here's a look at the starting lineups. Eugene Lawrence shooting the three very well of late for St. John's, and Anthony Mason Jr. has been playing well on the road of late. And for Providence, McDermott among the stat leaders in several categories, but their X Factor could be Wemi Ekajuku. Very athletic youngster out of Rice High School from Queens, New York, went to uh, from Fresh Meadows, New York, 19th in scoring. He's 13 points a game coach, and if he's the kind of guy that is so athletic that if he can ever get off to a good start and stay consistent for 40 minutes, I mean, he could put up huge numbers for the Friars. He has been inconsistent, and it's uh, driven the coaches a little bit crazy, but when he's good, he's scary good. There's a look at McDermott, Jeff McDermott, who's uh, the number one assist man, and, and inside there's Tim Welch, who's done an outstanding job here and at Iona College, protege of Jim Beheim, who's an assistant up there for many years. And Norm Roberts in his third season at St. John's, 36 and 44, his record. He's got six wins in the Big East this year, which matches last year's total. So they're quite optimistic about making the Big East tournament. Of course, today is a critical game. Let's take a look now at our game-changing performer for today's game. And as we mentioned, it's uh, Epijuku. Good numbers, 13 points and four rebounds, but he has potential to be a 19-8 and eight guy. Referees today, John Cal, Jamie Lucky, and John Gaffney. John Gaffney gets underway with the tip, and here's Providence on the attack first. Friars come in having lost two consecutive games in six of the last nine. They lost to Notre Dame on Thursday, 81-78. Up 12 early in that game, and they gave it up in the second half. Paulie, no, and a rebound to Calhoun for St. John's. No surprise there. St. John's in their tenacious half-court man-for-man. And the uh, Friars going down inside early, which is what they need to do. Calhoun gets one up on the rim, won't go. Rebound kept alive. Nice job by Hamilton. Got it to Mason Jr. He'll pop from there, and he hits. Not a good sign for Providence. When Anthony Mason gets a good start, St. John's can be very, very good. Last three games, Mason, 12 points and five rebounds and shooting 52%. Here's Curry, feed down low. Good operation or uh, player right here. Hill from the about 10 feet in. That goes up over the top at the Juku. But we're going to like Herbert Hill down low, Coach. St. John's not doubling down on uh, the post play of Herbert Hill. Uh, you know, you have to, well, have to watch. They're, they're a terrific half-court defensive team. But if I'm playing against Providence, I make somebody other than Hill beat me. St. John's 1-5 in, in Big East road play. won at Cincinnati. Providence 4-1 here at home. Here's Calhoun, dump it down to Hamilton. Good job defensively. What do we got to tie up? McDermott with some outstanding defense. And let's see, the ball will stay right here as we take a look at our principal financial group edge to today's game, Coach. Well, St. John's defensive transition. they got to keep the Friars in front of them. And as I just pointed out, anybody but Hill. Make some of those guys prove it on the outside. He is a proven. Nice rebound in there by Jonathan Culley. Sets up this possession down low. Oh. Herbert Hill jump off. Oh, that's textbook low post play. If one guy's going to handle him, I hope he had a good night's sleep. Rebound Hill on the miss by Patterson. Remember now, both these teams played Thursday. like 39 hours ago. And, of course, St. John's played at home in the defeat of Rutgers. But... The Friars had to come from South Bend, Indiana, where they ran out of gas in the second half. A very impressive first half. Lawrence on the carry, turns it over. St. John's with 14 turnovers a game, almost 15. 13th in the conference in assist turnover ratio. They've had their struggles. St. John's is close to having a four game win streak. Uh, losing by two up at the dome. Uh, Demetrius had 37, which, you know, that's hard to believe. But uh, other than that, 
that St. John's is riding the crest of the wave with four in a row. Demetrius Nichols went for huge numbers, hit all kinds of shots. Down low, Hamilton up and under, had it missed it. This flat missed it, got the underside of the rim. Hamilton wasn't one-on-one -on -one down there, boy. They uh, got to him quickly with help. Lawrence, now check that, that was uh, Curry on a turnover, trying to feed it down low to Hill. Remember now, St. John's has lost nine straight to the Friars. Somewhere in there, percentages, something. Uh, that's in the Big East with the balance. Uh, that's just really a, a very strange set. It's six double-figure wins in there for uh, Providence, including 25 and 21-point victories. Keep it right here. This is John Cal. Looks like McDermott's going to get called for the foul. I think it's important, Dave, early for the Friars to get out and run so that they don't have to, to be uh, confronted with that tenacious half-court defense. If they can get in some transition, I think they're bigger, they're quicker, and they're deeper. Hamilton turns and faces and scores. So Lamont Hamilton with his first bucket. How about uh, Providence? Yes, in terms of scoring, only Notre Dame's better at 81 points per game. That was a terrific uh, game Thursday night. Uh, the Friars came out smoking, actually led 24 to 12. And over the space of time, the Irish just wore them down, changed their defense, and ended up with the big W. Good stroke by Epijuku, his first bucket. Sophomore from Fresh Meadows, New York. He had seven points and two rebounds against Notre Dame. Patterson down low, Calhoun up and under. Oh, he turned it right over to Curry. Curry back the other way, sets up Epijuku, block. Oh. Mason Jr. takes over. That one blocked by Patterson. Mason Super. racing down the other way. Oh, nice pass down low. Hamilton goes glass and scores. Ooh, that one can make Sports Center. Over the head pass. Ooh. Both teams ready to play. I'll say that. There's no lollygagging out there. Four points for Hamilton. Red Storm by two. They post up Hill. Cross court. Mason all over that one. Curry regains for St. John's. Curry to Epijuku. Turns the corner, in the pain, lays oh. it up. That's beautiful. That's why they don't like him. Four <laughs> points for Wamey Epijuku. Don't try it out in your backyard without a chiropractor. Lawrence down the lane, flipped it, won't go. That one rebounded by Cauley. He's got three boards already. Epijuku looks to McDermott as a great high school quarterback, played at New Rochelle High School with Ray Rice, the uh, All-American, All-Big East performer at Rutgers. That's a Juku again. He's got six. He's got six of the eight Providence points. He's averaging 30 minutes a game, and he's shooting 48% from the floor, and some of them, some of them pretty fancy. Lawrence. More of a classic point guard. Doesn't look to shoot, but he's been shooting it very well. Ooh, Hamilton had a shot. Gave it up to Mason, and it turned out to be the right decision for a triple. Yeah, he's got but five. I, Dave, if I'm coaching and I get my center the ball right underneath, I want him to attack. Anyway, it worked well for St. John's that time. Nice slip down low. Hill. No, and a rebound. Of Vigorous a rebound by Hamilton. Lawrence the other way. Lawrence will pull up. He's been hot from three, and it continues. Woo! Eugene Lawrence from deep. Unbelievable. He's 12, now 13 out of 16 from three-point range in three-plus games. And it's been a gradual buildup over the season. He's now up over 41% from three, but he didn't start out that way. Daryl Hill, his injury, he got more playing time, more responsibility, and he has just grown. He is a confident scorer right now. Good hustle to run that down by Calhoun. Mason known, rebound to McDermott. St. John's by four. Early on here, St. John's at six and seven in the Big East. Oh, another turnover. What's going on here? That is the fourth turnover by Providence already. And Eugene Lawrence, the captain of the Red Storm, has St. John's off to a good start. He contributes with a big three right there. Today's ESPN Plus game is brought to you by Hyundai with quality that lets them offer America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. 
select Sector Spiders. Start weaving a stronger portfolio today. Visit us on the web at sectorspdrs.com or call 1-800-THE-MX. Advance Auto Parts for the best parts, people, and prices. We're ready in advance. PNC leading the way. And by Infinity, makers of the all-new 306 horsepower Jeep design beyond machines. Good looking day here in Providence. St. John's off to a good start by four, 12 to eight, 13.42 to go first half. Taking on the Providence Friars who have beaten St. John's nine consecutive times. The last time St. John's won was back in Feb 8 of 2000. 61.46 here in Providence. Interesting though, Dave, St. John's is better on the road. They're two and five on the road in the Big East and their shooting percentage from the floor, from three, and from the foul line is higher when they're wearing red. Amazing. Yeah. Backdoor cut, nothing there for Mason. As we take a look at our the principal financial group edge to today's hey, hey, game. Wait, wait, wait. And defensive transition been pretty good so far, Coach. Yeah, we didn't get to talk about Providence. They got they to force the up-tempo, again, to avoid the, uh, the half-court defense, and they got to go inside first. Five turnovers already for Providence. Not the start Tim Welch and the fans are looking for here as Jasalonis leaves. And Tim Welch had a great run at, in the MAC conference at Iona College. Went to the NCAA tournament. Guy that has succeeded him, Jeff Rulin, great All-American, terrific pro. Struggling this year after getting to the NCAA tournament last year. Here's Lawrence up top. Lawrence and a miscommunication tried to he assumed that Avery Patterson was going to cut, and he wasn't there. Fourth turnover for the Red Storm. How about Effa Juku off to a three for five shooting start? Rest of the club, one for four for Providence. See if they continue to feed the hot hand. Providence showed a little two three in that uh, matchup they run the last time down the floor. Curry will offer from deep and hit. Boy, pure that one. Good job there. That was a triple. For Sherrod Curry, the sophomore from Gainesville, Georgia. He's 40th three of the season. Spears, Aaron Spears in the game now. He was just four for 14 in that loss at South Bend. Wide right is Lawrence. Rebound to McDermott. Boy, Apajuku turns it over. Here's Lawrence for St. John. Numbers against him, and he'll back it out. Patterson lost it. Turned it over. Here comes Curry. Numbers against him. Curry's got to get to the free throw line. He's shooting 89%. My goodness. With that kind of percentage, you got to put it on the floor and draw some fouls. McKenzie in and out. Rebound. And that goes to Herbert Hill. Again, uh, Friars showing that zone. Trying to test the outside shooting of St. John's. St. John's getting off to a good start which is important for a team on the road. Hamilton turns face, dump down to Spears, well done. His first bucket. He has been more valuable to St. John's coming off the bench as a reserve than he was as a starter. Steal, one man to beat. Here's Mason Jr. Nicely done. He's got seven and St. John's up five and a timeout. St. John's out hustling Providence here. No question. Uh, Providence did not practice yesterday. I was uh, all set to come over to watch the workout, and they elected to uh, just watch some film and uh, kind of walk through some things. They're tired. Remember, Thursday night in South Bend, and it didn't have a happy ending. There's the athleticism of Anthony Mason, Jr. Well, he talked about <laughs> a player meeting the ball. Yeah. He did, the uh, offensive player was flat-footed. Uh, it's uh, a guy with that kind of quicks and hands. I mean, he'll take your hubcaps, your fillings, everything. 10-3 run by St. John's. St. John's has made it four of its last six. And you'll take those percentages any day of the week. Yeah, scoring's been a problem for him uh, all through the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, Norm Roberts has played that tenacious defense, and they just have managed to lose 55 53 whatever they got a lot more offensive punch right now with this club Daryl Hill uh, finally resigned to the fact that he can't go and that's a shame he was a fine athlete fine player but uh, those knees have gotten to him 
So it's a different St. John's team now. St. John's 15th in scoring of the Big East ahead of only Rutgers. At 64 points per game. Curry, see if there's more energy coming up and a hand check by Lawrence, his first foul. And we reach our TV timeout, 10.38 to go. St. John's up five on the road at Providence. Welcome back, everybody. A five-point St. John's lead early on here at Providence. And we look at the banner saluting two of the great names in Providence history, the late Joe Mullaney and Dave Gavitt. There's Coach Gavitt with his wife and uh, Coach Gavitt in the Hall of Fame and had the court named after him here in Providence back on January 6th. There's the ceremonies. And Dave, just a major, major figure in American basketball. Yeah, he's done it all. He birthed the Big East, and uh, what a what a great innovator, a great administrator, and a pretty darn good basketball coach. His wife, Julie, right there, she's uh, been a big part of that franchise. Look forward to working with Coach on uh, Westwood One Radio coming up in the uh, NCAA tournament. There's Curry taking it down well. He's got five. Here come the Friars, down three now. Epijuku got off to the fabulous start, three for five, six points. Mason got up to a hot start for St. John's at seven points, both with uh, shooting high percentages, too. St. John's got Ricky Torres in, who has not been getting many minutes the last few weeks. His game is shooting. He's a little slow, but against this zone, it may uh, be productive for him. Hamilton kept it alive, and Larry Wright kept it alive again. But here comes Curry for the Friars. <laughs> Boy, he runs right up the back of Hamilton. <laughs> Pick on somebody your own size, Curry. Giving away about 80 pounds in uh, seven inches. They go to McKenzie in the corner, feed the low post, Ray Hall. Hall working, gives it to McKenzie with 16 shot clock. McKenzie short jumper in and out, kept alive by Hamilton. Back to Curry. Curry, runner, no, shot it short. Oh, my. Norm Roberts is going ball right in front of our eyes. Hall powers it home. That's how a big fella gets it done on the baseline. His first bucket, Ray Hall, a freshman from Denver, Colorado. To quote the late uh, Jimmy Valvano and the theme of our V Foundation, don't ever, ever, ever give up. Boy, the Friars were just relentless. Very right, feeds some high post. Spears, he'll drill it from there. Aaron Spears, he's got four. He's shooting 54% from the floor in the Big East that he went through a suspension early in the year. And Norm Roberts, one of the reasons he's so respected is the discipline and the uh, the culture that he has built into the St. John's program. And it's, it's paying off. Next year's recruiting, in fact, uh, indicating that uh, we're going back to the old neighborhoods where Lou Carnesecca and Frank McGuire went. So it's on the upswing. That last foul on Torres. His first as McDermott blew right by St. John's. More chance to run him down for you. Ron Carroll. Uh, Calhoun's back in again. Red Storm in his own now. That's interesting. Curry, Epijuku, Pauly. Down low to Hill and McKenzie for the Friars. McKenzie at the three. No good. Kept alive. Patterson will take control. One and done that time. So Torres, Hamilton. Patterson, Mason, and Calhoun for St. John's. Torres, quick delivery, nothing doing there. Good rebound. Good down by Calhoun. It's rare to see Eugene Lawrence out of the game at point, especially with the uh, with the zone at both ends of the floor. Not a good pass by. Torres, and then a turnover at the other end. Six turnovers already for St. John's. Seven for Providence. Herbert Hill just below the foul line. Got his own rebound. Well, he's got great low post. Remember now, both played Thursday night. Mason, deep shot. Hill won that battle against Hamilton. They look a little, they just kind of look a little flat here with just a little yeah. over seven minutes left in the first half. Are you half. seeing those pianos on the back, too? <laughs> Pauly. Oh, oh. Everything can go down. Nobody on that offensive board for Providence. We talked about the tempo of this game coming in. St. John's wants to play half court, walk it up, and, and Providence wants to get in that, that left lane and go 80 miles an hour, right? Yep, but uh, it, it has not worked out that way. Yeah. Providence has missed six of its last seven. This is clearly St. John's tempo. 
Torres. Oh, what's that air ball? Shot an air ball from in close. It's it's windy up here, but we're indoors. Oh, nice pass. Hill, good hands, and he lays it in. He's got four. Herbert Hill, the 6'10 senior from Kinston, North Carolina. And oh, Norm, and Norm uh, Roberts didn't like effort there. I think this is going to all is going to be a all about effort today. Who can withstand? Uh, who can put some kind of pressure on? And who can withstand it and recover from it? Oh, great passing that time. Providence much better in transition. Getting up to four that time, the St. John's defense wasn't ready to play. They didn't have Providence in front of them, thus an easy basket. Take a look at our Big East leaders brought to you by Hyundai. In this 18-17 game and uh, top scores, Ooh, Demetrius Nichols. Look at that, 18 points. Russell Carter, Curtis Sumter, and Herbert Hill. Hill having an outstanding year. Fourth in scoring, second in field goal percentage to Georgetown's Roy Hibbert. Fourth in block shots. Seventh in offensive rebounds and fifth in defensive rebounds. That says all conference to me. That Demetrius Nichols performance at 37. You know, you, you can see him getting 37 against some teams, but St. John's is, is one of those teams. They play defense at half court level like kamikaze pilots. And uh, it's it's hard to imagine him just catching and shooting over the, over the Red Storm for 37. That's the extent of his game, too. He's not you know, a guy that's going to beat you off the drive. Eugene Lawrence back in the game. Sets up Mason. Yeah. Mason feeling it. Boy, is that smooth. Yeah. He's got nine points. St. John's 9 of 20 from the field. Glad you could join us, everybody. Big East basketball. Dave Sims, Bucky Waters with you from the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Mason again. How's he going to finish? Hey! I give that a 9-5. Greg Luganis, Olympic diver, try that one with a ball. 22-17 St. John's trying to end a nine-game losing streak to Providence. And Pajuku gets in deep. I think that's the first touch he's had in a while. He's got eight. Yeah, I think the Friars have got to go to, uh, to the players that scored early for him. Hill primarily. Pajuku also was hot. And Pajuku's got eight. Hill has four. And for St. John's 11 for Mason. I think, I think if Robinson can go inside out, it's going to really help their perimeter game as well. And that's where their strength is. That's where you got to start. Big guys get the touches. They set up Calhoun. Three on the shot clock. Lawrence will have to deal from there. Shot it short. Kept alive. And here comes Epajuku. And Curry got it. Curry, a oh. deal of three. Back with no good rebound, Hamilton. Two Friars underneath, wide open. Curry took the shot. Look at Mason. Oh, what a step back by McDermott. Oh, oh. Return to Senda. That was like a three-wood in the 14th row. Boy, that was an outstanding attack by Anthony Mason, Jr. But the block is even better by Jeff McDermott. And there's a Mason on the flush to play before St. John's in front. Big East basketball from Providence. A look at State House here. It's a gorgeous day. Very cold, though. We envy you fans in the uh, regions around the country where the sun's shining and the temperatures are a heck of a lot higher. And our golf here, golf fans and club pros, it's not too early to start thinking about the 2070 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com to register your team or to sign up your course as a qualifying site. Be part of the research for the search for America's best twosome. How about the block there by McDermott? Oh, Jeff McDermott, a high school quarterback, an amazing athlete, but you should keep the ball in play, Jeff, so your team can run the other way. All you did was put on an impressive display, and St. John's gets the ball back. Quite an athlete. His quarterback defensive end, and he has a chance to uh, to lead the Big East in rebounding and assists, which is a pretty amazing combination. Never been done. Tough shot. Hamilton goes, and he's got six. And St. John's up by five. 24-19. Mason shooting five for 11. The rest of the club now six out of 17. Well, we talked about the necessity for Providence to get out and uh, try to get ahead of that St. John's defense. They have no fast break points. St. Oh. John's has four. He's scorching. Wamey Epijuku's got 10. 
The average is 13. Clearly the most effective score, shooting four for six. He's really streaky, too. He had 16 in the second half against Connecticut up there. And in fact, the only win for the Friars this year on the road in the Big East. Five for seven. Ooh, tough challenge and a foul. Good attack down low by Karan Calhoun. Foul on Cully. And make that McKinnon to take a break with a three-point St. John's lead. Brent Storm trying to end a nine-game losing streak to the Providence Friars. St. John's on top right now. Dave Sims and Bucky Waters with you. But Providence staying in the game because of Wemi Epajuku, a young man from Queens, New York, at a Fresh Meadows. Boy, he shows you the whole bag here. The spin moves, the wide open floaters. He is five for seven. He also can take a shot and still get it in. He goes right, he goes left. And as you pointed out during the break, Dave, he needs four shots. If I got a guy five for seven, nobody else out there better shoot it until he wears out. I, I go for kneecaps. I did a, a book that was at the Eagles and the Saints playoff game. And Deuce McAllister was running seven touches, uh, seven that yards of pop, and they were hardly it. giving him the ball. And Dan Reeves, I'd have to wear him out. <laughs> He'd have to carry the ball every play. Ride him, like, <laughs> ride him like a rented mule. <laughs> That's exactly right. Free throw by Calhoun is good. 66% free throw shooter. Well, you get a hot hand, I mean, just until it wears out. Let him go. Calhoun misses the second. St. John's is a team fourth in free throw shooting in the conference. This tempo very much in St. John's favor. Providence unable to get out and get in transition. I think they're bigger, more athletic, and they just haven't been able to, to get that tempo. And you were right about the fact that both of these teams, about 39 hours since they last teed it up. Epajuco seemed, he and maybe a couple other guys, about the only guy in the province team really showing some, some hops there, is it? Shot clock at three, two, and there's a shot clock violation as Lawrence blocked it from Epajuco right in front of, front of us. Nine turnovers, and we're at the 308 mark here in the first half. A great defensive stance that time by the Red Storm. They're, they're tenacious. They're not pretty, but if you like basketball and you can appreciate, you know, just getting down there for 35 seconds and playing tough D, you'll love them. Calhoun got it down low. Got the bucket. He's got three. St. John's with a 27-21 lead. Biggest lead enjoyed by Norm Roberts and his crew. Calhoun coming off a good night in that win over Rutgers by five. He had 13 points and seven boards. They don't get it done without him. First touch by Hill in a long time. Jump hook. No rebound. Loose ball comes to Epijuku. He's got 12. Epijuku is one of those four sophomores that have created high hopes in the Providence uh, College kingdom about the future of this program. Mason Jr. Wow, he's hot too. Goodness gracious, he's got 14. It's either a dunk or a three. Not bad. Biggest lead enjoyed here by St. John. Seven points under two minutes to play first half. Nothing happening here. Nothing yeah. happening. They're just dancing with the basketball. Curry has to fire. Rebound Hill. You're right, Coach. This is this is uh, check, check, and check in the St. John's playbook. Yeah. Wow, Hamilton tees it up from three. Surprised he did that with the hot hand in Mason. <laughs> He'll hear about it. But he has expanded his game in terms of uh, being able to go outside and do some good things. But now is not the time, big fella. Pauly, foul line, jumper's good. His first bucket. Seems like it's been a long time since Providence scored. Last about three, four trips. Providence coming off of two impressive but losses on the road at Pittsburgh. They played them tough, and they played the Irish tough in South Bend, but they couldn't sustain it and finish. Mason, oh, good athleticism there by Lawrence. No, he stepped on the sideline. I hadn't seen that pass since Sweet Georgia Brown and the Globetrotters went through. <laughs> Let's see, in that seventh turnover. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, he was out in the alley. <laughs> Steve DeMeo there yeah. all over it, and John Gaffney bought it. 
Tim just giving him a little help. Yep. Epijuku. Good gracious. 15, let him rip. Feed the hot hand. It's a, the worst thing that's happening in Providence right now is the half's going to end. <laughs> Down two after all of this. Epijuku with a fabulous first half. Hamilton dealing, had it taken away. Nice defense on the big fella. Lawrence, no. Rebound at the Juku. Here he comes again. Let's see if they let him shoot it. His third rebound. Don't pass it, son. And make him, make him come rip it out of your hands. Providence has a chance to tire and take the lead at halftime in spite of how poorly they played. Eight seconds. Epijuco with six. He backs out with five. He's got to go. Epijuco with three, with two, with one. Back rim, no good. Not that impressive with that much time. They had the high post pick, but nothing going on out there. Providence standing around. They had an option. They had an opportunity to go heel inside at the Juco outside, and they settled for a deep three. A deep, deep three. Halftime here in Providence. Epijuku putting on a show with St. John's and Anthony Mason Jr. lead by two as we go to halftime. We continue with halftime from Providence. St. John's taking on the Providence Friars, 30 to 28 here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Glad you could join us, everybody. Dave Sims and Bucky Waters, and it feels like this is about a 20-point game, and here's St. John's up by two. Lawrence Welk would have loved this <laughs> tempo. St. John's absolutely controlling the tempo. There have only been two fast breaks the whole day, and they were both by St. John's when Anthony Mason made the steal and went to the other end. Take a look at the first half highlights, and Anthony Mason Jr., here's that, the aforementioned ball. That's <laughs> it's it right there. That but he shot the ball very effectively. Great looking stroke. He's having one of his days. 14 points. And Efetuku showing his complete array. And there was a block by McDermott that went into the upper deck. Efetuku, what's the offense for Providence College? It's all they had. Hill, the big man and leading scorer, barely had touches. And that's a big factor. Hill with just four points at Pajuka with 15. But St. John's leads by two as we begin the second half right after this. Providence, Rhode Island. Big East basketball continues. About to start the second half. And here are the numbers brought to you by PNC Bank. 30 to 28. Both teams shot 45%. Not bad. Turnovers almost a push. And points off the turnovers a push. What do we look for second half here, Coach? Well, I'm looking for Providence to really get out and go. They're completely out of their element. They're one of the highest scoring teams in the conference. They have no fast breaks. Even more important and indicative of the texture of the first half, Providence has not been to the free throw line. Unbelievable. What that tells you is that they are not slicing and dicing and dashing and running. And I'm sure that that was the text of Tim Welch's halftime talk. They start a three-game home stand, and then they have two on the road that are winnable. They have 15 wins. The Friars could could have a 20-win season, but they better get it together in the second half. They're down two. They're playing at home. The number two scoring team, the Notre Dame of the Big East Conference. Number two shooting team, the Georgetown in the conference. Hill with the quick touch, and he scores. Three-point opportunity. Scores tied at 30. But the fact that Hill, that's only his seventh shot. The game was taken over by two sophomores. Very nice pass. Very nice pass. And again, look, look at that. Wide open. Little double team there by the red, but too little too late. That's the kind of driving and slashing that was completely absent after the first few minutes. Seven points for Herbert Hill. Three points the old-fashioned way. And St. John's leaders through the first 20 minutes. Mason really was scorching hot from the field. Six out of nine down low. Hamilton missed the dunk. McDermott may have influenced some of that. Hill got knocked down. They swing it around. It's Epijuku, Cauley, Hill, Curry, and McDermott. Here we go, they got four on three. Left side, Curry. 
No balance up the floor. You have Lawrence, Calhoun, Mason, Wright, and Hamilton on the floor for St. John's right now. A lot of juice in that half-court defense going down up by two. McDermott gave St. John's some life. McDermott with his stroke, just his first bucket. Glad you could join us for Big East basketball from the Dunkin' Donuts Center here in Providence, Rhode Island. Biggest lead here enjoyed by the Friars now up three along with Bucky Waters. I'm Dave Sims. Nice rebound, Herbert Hill. Late in the first half, St. John's had a seven-point lead. That was the most dominant part of the game for either team. Curry turns the corner, nothing there. Call it. Jump hook, and it blocked. I think it was Calhoun that got a piece of it. Boy, the battle inside now is fierce. Hill, Hamilton, both need more touches. Wright steps inside. Oh, what a delivery. Quick back, Hamilton, no second time. He's been right at the cup, got nothing. Breakout up at Juku. Missed the layup, but Hill is there. And he misses that one. Curry down low, turns it over. St. John's ball, but a foul before. Well, the upside for Providence is at least they were running and they had a fast break. <laughs> it's a very strange game, Jason. Look at this. He has a wide open layup. Just put it up. Put oh, it yeah. in. Why the double? <laughs> yeah, why the double clutch in the mustard? I don't know. He had such a great first half. No, point, point. no points for style. <laughs> Jeez. He was right. He was clean. It wasn't like he had to use the rim to protect to get right. the reject. Nah, that was showtime. Hill backs his way in. Looked to give it weak side and turns it over. Here comes Larry Wright. 11 turnovers for Providence. Wright's a threat. He's hit at least uh, one three-pointer in 15 games this year. And Providence is in that zone right now. How about Mason hasn't shot it yet, has he? Hamilton. No. 0 for 3 here in the early going of the second half. Leading score. Foul is on Hill, and that'll be his first. Down low, Hamilton working hard. Everything but go down. Aaron Spears is going to come in the game. The next opportunity, I think he's going to come in and get Hamilton. Nobody's in foul trouble. There were hardly any fouls in the first half. As we mentioned, the Friars never got to the line. And this game is almost like uh, a speed race as Hamilton, a 72 percenter, hits the first. Hamilton struggled. There's Spears about to come in. Hamilton entered today shooting 17 of 45 with just 19 rebounds his last three games. Got eight points now. And he'll get a blow here as Spears comes in. One point, Providence lead. Curry gets it to Efajuku, guarded by Wright. Pick from Pauly, splits the D, turned it over. Out of bounds on St. John's. Boy, part of it's the St. John's aggressive hands. You cut through the St. John's defense, it's like a deep muscle massage where they got you. But also, this, it just problem is just not crisp. They're not, not really attacking. Oh, this stunted looking offense, isn't it? Pauly, maybe that'll open things up. That's a big three for him. Eight points and Providence up by four now. Hasn't been the most aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing <laughs> Providence attack on offense. Well, you know, part of the problem at Notre Dame, they, they, they were up 24-12, they were up at half, and the disparity of fouls in the second half was a point of contention that Notre Dame shot, you know, 21 free throws and Providence shot one whatever, but we're seeing, you know, a sort of a, a, a replica of that, and they're not attacking. See what McDermott does here, gets it to Apajuku. Here's the matchup. Wright's got Efajuku high pick. Down the lane. You can hear it slap all the way over here. Good attack there by Wamey Efajuku out of Bryce High School and Brewster Academy. Take a timeout. Wright picks up the foul. His second. Providence by four when we get back. Dear Providence. 
Friars enjoying their biggest lead to this point in the game. Right now, let's take a look at our select stats brought to you by Select Sector Spiders. And there are the numbers right there. St. John's has seen Providence get out to an 8-2 start here in the second half. 13 for 34, 16 for 36. Are, there, are the right guys getting the ball at the right at the right time during possession here, Coach? <laughs> no, I, it, they're not. And for Providence, I really think they're just flat. I think maybe the best thing Tim Welch could have done yesterday is what he did, nothing in terms of just resting them. But they have come out well in the second half. There's just no juice. And this is a high-scoring team that, that needs to be active. And right now, the whole thing is playing to St. John's. St. John's has only hit 73 times in, in, in the 70s, three times in 13 Big East games. So wow. they're right at home. 17 for Epijuku. St. John's 0 for 5 from the field to start the second half. Providence 3 for 7. St. John's comes in over its last eight games, scoring eight, 5 and 3. But just 1 and 5 in Big East road games so far. That went at Cincinnati back in February 4th. Providence holding fourth, holding fourth here at home is four and one in conference play at home. Spears double team him. Turned it over. Good pressure. We got numbers too. Efajuku. Athletic move and it's goes. Wow. Ooh. He's got 19. Mason Jr. Has he shot it yet? <laughs> a little little discourse there. Is that a foul? Is that a foul? No, it's not a foul. Play. <laughs> Just play. All right. <laughs> I got the whistle, you play. <laughs> he, he bumped it. It's the Big East. Hello. Anthony Mace is going to be a lawyer. He was pleading his case. That's a oh, heck of yeah. a Oh, yeah. That's a heck of a move. Again, though, all he had to do was lay it up. I don't think he needed all the histrionics. Eight-point lead. Eight-point lead now by the first. What's the stop for? I don't now? know. Norm, Norm, Norm Roberts, not normally... That uh, excited boy, Ivan. John Cal explaining to Norm. Uh, it might have had something to do with the uh, coach's box. I think he's pointing to the floor. Norm's still going. Tim Welsh had a technical in that Notre Dame game, uh, concerned with officiating and the lack of uh, fouls. And uh, Norm is uh, is right there on the edge. I can't. I, it's been a while since I've seen Norm that riled up. Mason Mel first shot here, second half. St. John's 0 for 6 in the field. Down by 8. They're in danger zone right now. 8 rebounds for Cauley. McDermott being ridden by Mason. There's a foul there. Herbert foul Hill is one on Jr. one. Excuse me, Dave. On the box. <clears throat> they, just, they just looked right by him. Well, you think Hill would get a touch every time down. Oh. How about Georgetown? Jeff Green hit a two-thirds length of the court shot to make it 32-27 at halftime. Down at Wachovia Center in South Philly. Jay Wright draws those up. They practice those. <laughs> yeah. Georgetown in second place. Half a game behind Pittsburgh and Villanova at 6-5 and five in mid-pack in the Big East. Shot clock at 13. McDermott, long stroke, rebound to Mason. That's not a shot Tim Welch is looking for. Lawrence. Tough go for him today from yeah. three after coming in with fabulous numbers. 12 out of 15 his last three games. Well, McDermott will tee it up again from deep. Back rim, rebound, loose ball. Kept alive at the Juku, got it to Curry. Pauly, oh, he took an extra step. McDermott rebounds. Good set up the hill. Doesn't shoot it. Hill, you better shoot it when you get it, pal. You get that ball down close, you make your move. College, they don't let him turn the corner. Alley oh, oh, there it is. Good eye contact. McDermott, timeout, St. John's. Ten point, the lead for Providence. That puts some juice back in this crowd. They need it desperately. Good what set up man. by Cauley. Offense was stagnating, but not after that one. Timeout, St. John's. 
How about the Providence Friars on a 19-2 run? St. John's 0 for 7 here in the second half. Danger zone for the Red Storm. Providence trying to take command of this game. And right now, let's take a look at a Red Lobster. Nothing but net shot of the game. No more calls. We got a winner right here, Coach. <laughs> what a great pass by Curry. And the sophomore, Jeff McDermott, goes up over everybody. And the former quarterback knew what to do with it when he got there. Yes. That was a quarterback and a defensive end. That's a... That's a pretty interesting combination, but so is great rebounding and assists. Hamilton passes down low, and they get the score from Calhoun. Boy, there was intensity out of that timeout by St. John's. I think uh, five points for Calhoun. I think Norm Roberts chewed a lot of ears in that T.O. Efejuko up top. Curry. Curry with Hill, McDermott, Efejuku, and Pauly on the floor. Tell you what, Curry's having a heck of a battle against Eugene Lawrence, one of the great defenders in the league. He, and he's just going east-west. He's, yeah. not, he's not penetrating. He's dominating the ball. And as you point out, Lawrence is no guy to fool with out there. Lawrence, a two-sports star in high school as well. Efejuku not expecting a pass. He'll work in hard. Jump hook, no. Rebound Hamilton, and he got fouled by Pauly. Cauley with the foul, his first. Cauley has two points, eight rebounds, shooting one for six. Team foul, number two on the Friars. How about that? One for nine, ouch, second half. Trying to maintain some contact here. We got a tie up, and now we got a foul call. Jamie Lucky came in to overrule. Came in to overrule John Gaffney. Uh, the foul goes against McDermott, his second. Cauley out of the game now. Boy, he had a he had a huge game against the Irish. 17, 15 of them in the first 10 minutes in South Bend. And then the Friars just kind of went away. Here's Hamilton down low, turned away, foul on the second one. I think it was all ball the first time. John Cowell with the call and then a foul, going away. You have to understand Hamilton's frustration. He's a senior. He's never played in a postseason game, and there with it's within reach. And he is playing like a man possessed. His game has improved over his four years at St. John's. He just hasn't had enough guns around him to make it big. St. John's trying to make the Big East tournament for the first time since 03. Hamilton for his ninth point. He's got it. Providence has, in, uh, let's see, two years since the Friars went to the Big East tournament. As you know, the bottom four teams in the 16-team conference do not make it to New York City for the Big East tournament. And right now, St. John's and Providence bubbling just outside above that bottom four. Ten points for Hamilton. 42-36. Providence on top. McKenzie's in the game number 23 for Providence. St. John's switching on everything, especially where Faduco is, uh, is involved. Boy, they are really tracking him. He's had three different guys play him. Well, he's got a good one here. Lawrence, well, it's McKenzie on Lawrence. And Faduco's got oh. Take it away! Calhoun, one man to beat. And good back flow. Let's see, what do we got? Keep it right here, St. John's ball. Went out on Epijuka. We'll take a timeout, our 12-minute time TV timeout. Six-point lead for Providence. The signature of St. John's defense. Why are we... Providence, Rhode Island. Glad you could join us on this bright and sunny... And yeah, it's cold, too. Pretty spirited contest going on here. St. John's of Providence. And, uh, hey, golf fans and club pros, it's not too early to start thinking about the 2007 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com to register your team or to sign your course up as a qualifying site. Be part 
of the search for America's best Tucson. Dave, I'd really like to play, but I've already made an appointment to have my ball retriever re gripped. <laughs> Here's the play. Anthony Mason, airborne. We've seen all sorts of athletic efforts, and some of the gyrations on the sidelines have been good, too. Oh, yeah. So Lawrence, Wright, Mason Jr., Hamilton, and Calhoun on the floor for St. John's. Dump it down, Calhoun, pinned by Hill. Now, find Hill on the other end. Epijuku and Hill are the guys. They got them. Here's Hill coming up for a high pick. We got a mismatch now with Hill on Lawrence. 18 shot clock, Curry flip, no. They've seen that before, Curry, tough shot. That will go off at the bullpen, he knew it too. Yeah, he yeah. knew it as he came down, he knew he was in it too soon. You know, Herbert Hill got to Providence because Tim Welsh's dad, Jerry Welsh, a terrific coach, lives in North Carolina. Watch, we, we're gonna watch this sequence now. Good block, no body contact, what a player. Anyway, Jerry, Tim's dad lives in North Carolina. In fact, in Durham, I see him on the golf course often, and he discovered this guy. And of course, he was a project when he came, but he's become quite a center. How about Larry Wright? Long way to get a deuce there. Well done, St. John's to within four. His first bucket, McDermott thought about it. Down the lane, he got it! That's what I expect to see from the Friars. Slashing, attacking. Not the point guard going east, west, east, west, east, west, east, west. McDermott with six. Still a St. John's tempo though right yeah, now. Yeah, yep. McDermott was the determined slasher that time. Wow, Lawrence <laughs> outside. Good block out by Providence. Did you see that? Don't Great block out. Don't forget about Hamilton, St. John's. Both of these teams getting prone to take that quick three and forget their franchise players are their centers. Down low, Herbert Hill deals. Nice pass. Nothing doing. Rebound and a tie up. No. Calhoun now a tie up. But Hill and Calhoun, good effort in there. 44-38. Good defense that time. They collapsed, forcing Hill to make the pass. Boy, he's come a long way. Herbert Hill. So Aaron Spears in the game. He's in for Calhoun. So Lawrence, Spears, Wright, Mason Jr. and Hamilton turnover. Here come the Friars and then it was stolen right back by Wright. Down low, oh, he was on the sideline. Norm Roberts, I, I haven't seen a guy that excited without jumper cables on his chest. Look, look at this. Look at the steal coming back. Boy, the official was right on the play. I mean, he couldn't have been any closer. Norm, Norm's got an aerobics class going today. Norm, Norm showed some quicks there. Former <laughs> point guard at uh, Queens College in New York City. 44-38. Pauly, high post, looks at Hill. Down low, Epijuco had it knocked away by Wright, but it goes out on St. John's. Terrific defensive play by Wright. He was beaten to the spot, managed to get around and deflect it. That's it. The, the, the whole yeah, the, tenor and texture yeah. of this game is... Got unplugged, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's totally like unplugged. A, it's not like a Big East game. It's, yeah. There were some minutes there, late first half. St. John's threatened to blow this game open. They were up by seven, and then Providence came back. Curry, boy, he's determined to get the shot up, and he scored that time. He wanted the bump. He's got ten. Yeah, if I shot 89% from the foul line, I want, uh, I want to get up there, too. Big At part. least he, he went north-south that time. That's right. Mason Jr. not looking to shoot it here. Passing, and that time it comes away. The bucket from Hamilton has got 12. Nice ball movement that time by the Red Storm. And Hamilton's not selfish. He's become a pretty decent passer. There's Epijuku on the wing. 
Back to Curry. What a little guy got inside. Get away! Boy, he's he's a handful. 12 points. The whole difference now, Dave, is that Providence is attacking north and south, slashing. They're going to get to that free throw line. Spears got tied up by Hill. Possession arrow gives the ball to Providence. Eight-point game with 8.28 to go, and Sherrod Curry just knifing down through there. The bakes for Providence also did a nice job of screening there, opening that hole for the little guy. Curry coming off an 11-point, five-rebound performance at Notre Dame on Thursday. Went for 19 points last year against St. John's. Again, Providence has beaten St. John's nine consecutive times. Down low to Herbert Hill. Face up, spin move, jump, no, and they keep it alive. Hamilton almost knocked it. Look at Curry get the rebound, and he got fouled. Old Mo, the momentum definitely wearing the gray shirt right now. It has swung back and forth a number of times today, but right now, if the Friars got the juice. Good turn by Hill. Good defense, forced the shot. Foul was on Spears, and now Epajuku bumped as he was coming through the lane by Wright. So another foul on St. John's. That's Wright's third. Yeah, Wright will bump you. Tough, tough customer. Only 6'2". Saginaw, Michigan. This is his kind of weather. Yeah, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> Well, so we'll have a parade next time he gets over 30. <laughs> they get it inbound. Here's Curry. Ricky Torres just came in for right for St. John's, wearing number 22. On the attack, what Cawley wasn't ready for that one. He was surprised by that pass. And now foul. And it's going to go against Curry. Make that uh, Cawley. That's his second. Providence by eight. Eight-point Providence lead, 7.49 to go in this Big East contest here in Providence, Rhode Island. Take a look now at our game-changing performance brought to you by Pontiac. We said this guy would uh, be very, very good or maybe disappear. Well, he hasn't disappeared today. Look at you go from all over the place with contact, without contact. He has been sensational, and now I think the rest of the Providence team is catching up with him. And Dave, I want to take this opportunity uh, for all your fans. That's the first time I've seen you since you got the Mariners job. Basketball, football, we'll share you a little bit with baseball, and <laughs> by coastal you will be. That's a wonderful opportunity. Congratulations. Coach, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Looking out, looking forward to going out and doing Seattle Mariner baseball coming up in a few weeks, as a matter of fact. Oh, you mean you, you tell me you're going to leave Providence in the Northeast and do a little uh, <laughs> spring training? Yeah, you got to rub it in, don't you? <laughs> There's Mason. It's been a while since he shot it. Epijuku with the rebound. Providence with the ball up eight. Yeah, but they're running. Providence now got a little juice. Yeah, L much better than what we saw early. And I think you, your point on Curry now is doing the East-West thing again. Paid for it. Mason got bumped by Epijuku. First foul up by Epijuku. He had that stretch until maybe that possession yep. where everything was, as you said, north-south. Yep. Unfortunate. They had a little momentum, but hey, there's a 7-11 to go here. Lots of time. Lots of time for all momentum to switch sides again. Epijuku's going to get a rest right now. And coming into the game is Brian McKenzie, freshman from Zaverian High School in Brooklyn, New York. Got Lawrence and Tourist in the backcourt. Calhoun turns, attacks, dumps it down low in traffic. Mason's going to shoot a couple free throws. I think Calhoun had his mind made up what he was going to do. He was actually wide open, and he turned down into a, a defensive pack and tried. Look how open he is. And he takes it right down where all the gray jerseys are, and then managed to go to the free throw line. But you got to you got to give what the defense. I mean, you can take what the defense gives you, and he was wide open. Third foul on McDermott. Mason did most of that damage in the first half. He's 0 for 4 here in the second half. Shooter's touch on that free throw. Of course, Anthony's dad played with the New York Knicks and the Milwaukee Bucks, among other teams in the NBA. And uh, Anthony Mason Jr., 76% at the line. He's got 16 points. All the way down 
the Red Storm three-quarter court pressure. That should help Providence speed up their play. Under seven to play, six-point game jump up. Pauly, good touch. He's got four. Red Storm really need this game. After here, they go to Louisville, then they have Duke in Madison Square Garden and finish their season with these same Providence Friars uh, on uh, the 4th of March. Last day of the season, Torres from deep, no, rebound. Taken down by McDermott. McDermott, Torres picks it off, regains, and they got numbers. Calhoun, and he'll shoot a couple. Norman Roberts almost racing stride for stride. I think he was looking for an intentional. Third foul on McKenzie. Here's an advanced look at upcoming games brought to you by Dance Auto Parts for the best parts, people, and prices. We're ready in advance. There's Louisville, Duke, and Providence left for St. John's. West Virginia and Syracuse come to town, and then Friars have to go to Tampa to take on South Florida. As we said earlier, Providence coming home after two tough road losses at Pittsburgh and at Notre Dame. If they can sweep this home series with three and pick up those two uh, coming down the stretch. They got St. John's in the world's most famous arena to end the season and a winnable game in Tampa against South Florida. They could have 20 wins. Ron Calhoun, good trip. Two free throws. Started the last four games. Been playing well. Gets seven. And here's St. John's. Down six, Epijuku back in the game, runner flip, no, Hill there, off the glass and in. As I said earlier, this press by St. John's is forcing uh, Providence to attack, and they're looking better doing it. Hill's got nine, and nine rebounds as well, so coming up on a double-double. High post, Hamilton, oh. nothing there, he got hammered, wow. Boy, the big guy has some quick feet, doesn't he, Dave? Woo. That's a good job. Real nice job by Hamilton, senior out of Brooklyn. Fajuku out down the lane, misses. Good offensive rebounding that time. Herbert Hills figured out the only way he's going to get it is off the board. <laughs> and not he's looking for him. He's having a great year. Might be, uh, you know, he's looking at uh, first team, maybe no worse than second team all conference. He, uh, he just hasn't had enough opportunities today. And I think uh, early with the really tough half-court defense of St. John's, Sometimes it is hard to find them, but he got the good start. And they really never did double down on St. John's again trying to reach the Big East Tournament for the first time since 03. Providence hasn't been there in two years. Hamilton working on this free throw. Good stroke there. He's got 14. It's a six-point game again. Only 12 make it to the tournament, and uh, these two teams' preseason rating were 10 and 9, respectively. So they're right on the fence and still there as we head into the first week in March. McDermott from way outside. Shot it short. And that was Hamilton who hit the deck. Torres ahead of the pack. Torres laying up with the left hand and got it. His first bucket tonight. He's noted for his outside shooting, but he gets a breakaway there. 52-48. Here come the Red Storm right back in it. Sadly for Providence, McDermott wanted to argue that he was fouled instead of getting back and provided St. John's with the opportunity. Epijuku, Hill got fouled. Hill all over the boards. His 10th rebound of the day. I'm telling you, he's figured out everything that goes over that glass is a pass. Back the other way, nice outlet pass by Eugene Lawrence. But McNervin set that up by uh, a little discourse with the official when he thought he was fouled on the shot. Can't win that argument. It's like, uh, it's like arguing with an echo. Just get back. <laughs> so double-double for Herbert Hill. Ten points, ten rebounds. Still only a five-point game. The tenacity of St. John's. Well, if you were with us in the first half, the game, it was a two-point St. John's halftime lead. It felt like it was a dozen the way they played. No rhythm was found at all by Providence. Things have changed here in the second half. 54-48. They're going for Hamilton. Yeah. And that's why. Short turnaround. He's got 16. It's a four-point game. The simplicity of the Red Storm attack. Come down, good spread, good distance, and uh, find the big guy. Good point. That's an NBA three at the Juku. What do we got? Out of bounds off of Hamilton. St. John's came out of the press, as uh, we had mentioned earlier. 
4.40 to go. This game breezing by. Efejuku on the inbound. He's guarded by Mason. That's a great matchup. There. Right here, Curry and Lawrence. And Curry. Yeah. Oh, boy. Quick on quick. Tough, too. Well, they took care of that pick and roll. What do we got? Timeout. Tim, Tim Wells didn't like what was developing. They had 20 on the shot clock, and St. John's clearly had that. Whatever play they were getting ready to work, it was defense. <laughs> More Big East Hoops action comes your way Saturday, February 24th from ESPN+. Plus. Hot-handed freshman Deonta Vaughn and junior guard Marvin Gentry. They lead the Cincinnati Bearcats into All-State Arena for Big East Battle versus veteran guard Sammy Mejia and the DePaul Blue Demons. That's Cincinnati versus DePaul next Saturday at noon Eastern time, only from ESPN+. Plus. Four-point game. Providence in the lead. St. John started the second half 0 for 8 following that great Tim Welsh uh, pep talk at half. And since then, they've been 5 for 9. So right. the Friars still unable to put the Red Storm away. Providence had a 10-point lead on St. John's. There's your Star Watch update. 16 and 8 for Hamilton Hill, a double-double. But Hill not having as many opportunities. It's remarkable how he's a great go-to guy, low post. And they're not looking for him that much. And St. John's, you're right. St. John's defense has factored in, but they're not looking for him. Now they go to him. Weak side. Good defense by Lawrence. One, uh, Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Call, you got to come to meet that pass. That was, that was a good pass by Hill. Mason. Got the length and the quickness to stay with Epajuku. They feed the post. Hill up and under. Shot it short. Tip is good. Herbert Hill staying with it. Boy, nice quick hops. He's got 13. Crowd back in it. We're under four minutes to play. And knocked out of bounds. And our four-minute TV timeout. Norm Robertson company down six. They continue to climb up the hill. But Herbert is right there. Good effort. Second effort right here. Pays off. Providence by six. Cold and crisp here in Providence, Rhode Island. Inside some basketball. The last 354. Coach, you're in that never know territory. It's a six point game. Herbert Hill does have a double double <laughs> at 13 and 11. Granddad getting a. Aspiring, young and aspiring cheerleader there <laughs> in the Dunkin' Donuts Arena and the Dave Gavitt Court. Hamilton turned away. St. John's was down by 10 earlier here in the second half after leading 30-28 at halftime. Friars just thrashing the Red Storm on the boards, 37-20. to 20. You, you know, you wonder why they can't put them away. Torres hit it block. Hamilton got it back in, saves it up, and Juku takes over. Poor Hamilton has gotten so much quicker. He lost that weight that he had as a uh, earlier in his career. Hill. No, and had a foul. Good, good call. Cauley was right there and almost ended up in the first row. <laughs> but Torres picks up his second foul. That's Hill with a good move inside. Just. Old school center moves, boy. They work. He's got them. Still work. <laughs> Callie at the line. Sophomore from Metapan, Mass. And it's interesting. It's big kid. It's 6'8", 250. He's got an NBA type body, but when you read about him, it says he wants to be a sports agent or be in sports marketing. Everybody else on the team and just about everybody else in Division <laughs> I, One basketball wants to go to the NBA. I buy a commercial from him. Anybody yeah. that's 6'8 uh, uh, and 250. He's an 80% free throw shooter. Impressive for a big guy. Yeah. No question about it. He's got six. How about this? One of the reasons why St. John's is down 58-50. The hot hand of Anthony Mason Jr. He's 0 for 4. And I'm not so much surprised by the, the fact that he hasn't hit 
any, but the fact he's only taken four shots. Well, two of them were steals and breakaways. All right, here's another one. Ofer continues, and a foul will keep it right here. St. John's has to be careful not to fall in love with that quick three. The franchise is still in there, and his name is Hamilton, and he stops the clock and goes to the free throw line. Fourth foul on McDermott. So Hamilton, 16 points, done a lot of damage here in the second half. He's got eight rebounds as well. And they're going to him, as they should. Yeah. He's 72% free throw shooter. Very impressive for a big guy. 21st in scoring the Big East, 16 in, in rebounds. And number 12 in defensive rebound. Real solid performer. Yeah. Nice rotation on that free throw, too. That one, uh, that was a soft little backspin. You don't see many guys that big with paws that soft. Entered today, 33rd on St. John's all-time scoring list. Approaching 1,200 points. 43rd player at St. John's to score more than 1,000 points for his career. Makes it a six-point game under three to play. And trying desperately for his first shot in the postseason. The senior class at St. John's has yet to go to the Big East Tournament. Foul by Torres with the left hand. They had him on the grab. That would third. That would include Daryl Hill and... Uh, of course, Spears was a junior college player, so right. that, that wouldn't count. I don't know that anybody on this uh, St. John's right. teams has ever beaten that Providence. Uh, I, yeah, absolutely. Their Ryan. last win goes back to 2000. You're correct. Well, it did have With to be apologies red. to Ed McMahon. <laughs> you are correct, sir. <laughs> you have to be redshirted <laughs> indefinitely. Yeah, yeah you think? <laughs> Boy, Providence enjoying a great second half at the line, eight for eight. Officials talking to these guys a little bit, too. Uh, coming down the stretch here, the really little desperation for both teams to win this game. Sure enough. And they, uh, they, they, they just had enough of the chin music. St. John's at six and seven in the Big East. Providence at five and six. Hamilton wanted it, and he got fouled. That's how you attack the glass. Ah, well done. Uh, all you aspiring centers, keep an eye on this guy. Third foul on Cauley. And equally important, it stops the clock at 229. Well, that was, uh, you were talking before we went on the air about Pete Newell Big Man's camp. That was right out of Coach Newell's camp, right? Yep. 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 A little shake, get the guy off. Kabump, kabump, yep. yeah. drop step, yep. boom. Yeah. It's almost like teaching ballroom dancing. Sure. Except you got a ball and probably a guy about 6'11", 280 <laughs> hanging on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the ballroom dancing. Thank you very much. Uh, St. John's 14 out of 15 at the line. It continues there. Good trip by Hamilton. 60-54. Boy, they, they got it to four. Hamilton's got 20. Yeah, they're doing it the old-fashioned way, stopping the clock and making free throws. Yeah. They got it the four a couple times here in the second half. It's back to six. Good battle. Hill and Hamilton down low. Fajuku haven't heard from him in a while. Curry turns the corner, turned away as we approach two minutes to go. Step back, fadeaway three, bad shot. Torres ends up at the ball as McDermott goes down. Two minutes to go in regulation. Providence has to be concerned about their fouling. Not in terms of foul problems, but they just keep uh, buying time for St. John's to get back in this game with the clock stop. Double bonus. There you go. Calhoun down low. Torres layup. 60 to 58. Torres with four. And a great look by Karen Calhoun. Nice interior passing by St. John's. Four-point game under a minute and a half to go. See if they settle. Oh, there's a steal by Torres. He got grabbed from behind. They didn't see that. Nope. Did you see that? As uh, he bumped it out of bounds. <laughs> His left hand got grabbed. Cali, uh, here's the play. Dump down inside. It looks like Providence is out of sync defensively. Uh, maybe not sure what defense they're in, but wide open. 
Curry under duress. Big three. Mason saved. Lawrence off the chest of McDermott. Got it back. Down low. Don't for him and one. Well, that play was never diagrammed. Holy mackerel. Great second reaction that time by Providence. Watch this. Going out of bounds. Lawrence uh, almost makes McDermott a soprano. They keep the ball in play, and they find Herbert Hill underneath. Oh, what a sequence. <laughs> that is some sequence. Oh. And then Hill, three-point play. So St. John's is ready to really uh, step on the throat of the Friars, and just that quickly, it's a seven-point game. And a with, crowd's back in it. With a minute to go, Mason missed, tip, good by Calhoun, timeout, St. John's. Red Storm hanging in, nine for Calhoun. We talked about the dominance on the boards in the second half, especially by Providence, but what a great offensive rebound. Mason catches iron. Boy, it looks like McDermott's got that ball locked up. Not so. Coming right up over the back. Superior offensive rebound by Ron Calhoun, the freshman from Jersey. Nice young players on both teams here. Boy, Calhoun, I mean, uh, Mason, 0 for 6 here in the second half after scintillating first 20 minutes. Over his last three games, he averaged Anthony Mason Jr. 12 points, 5 boards, shooting 51% from the floor, 41 from 3 point, and he started out that way and disappeared. Yeah, 14 points in the first half, 6 of 9 from the field, 2 of 4 from 3, and now 0 for 6, but yet St. John still has a shot here with 58-4 to go down 5. All right, full court pressure now by the Red Storm, and that makes Providence play faster and better. Epijuku. And Mason with the foul. That both teams in the double bonus. Bafajuku, yeah, 79% free throw shooter. It's very important now for both teams to know there's still time to be selective in fouling for St. John's. And there are certain guys who are higher priorities than other, like McDermott at 54. And uh, Herbert Hill at 57. They're the guys you want to send to the line. Well, Providence, perfect 10 for 10. At the line, Fajuku two for two. And they didn't have a free throw in the first half. Is that unbelievable? <laughs> this is that one. Providence eighth in the conference. St. John's fourth in the conference in free throw shooting. So Wamey with the second one is good. Six-point game with 57 seconds to go. 20 for Fajuku. Lawrence bought some real estate there to get a high pick. Mason finally makes timeout. St. John's one for seven. Second half, 19 for Anthony Mason Jr. and it's a three-point ball game. He just uh, he just won a little more drama. He, he went on sabbatical for most of the second half and uh, now it's showtime. Boy, he is wide open. I thought they'd go down inside again where they have come back and stayed in this game in the second half by going to the franchise, Lamont Hamilton, who hits his free throws and stops the clock. Great prescription. Providence has won nine consecutive games against St. John's. There's your reset situation. Providence has three times out remaining. One for the Red Storm position arrow, favors St. John's. Last win by St. John's. They came here in Providence February 8th of 2000, a blowout, 61-46. Nine consecutive losses. Six of them have been double-figure wins, including a 25er and a 21-point win. And they get another shot at each other on the 4th of March in the world's most famous arena, a Sunday. There's McDermott to inbound. Oh, I had to call a timeout before he wasted that five count. Nobody came free, and McDermott, a former quarterback, used some good judgment there. Yep, he uh, caught an audible. <laughs> That's a, he's an amazing athlete, McDermott. That's a, you, know, you think about a quarterback at 6'7", and, uh, you know, a good 235, but that's where it's going in No football. question about yeah. it. That young man from LSU. Yep. 
throws the ball 80 yards with a flick of the wrist. Let's take a look at the standings. Jamarcus uh, Nelson, I'm thinking of it. There's uh, St. John's at 10, Providence at 11. Providence about Connecticut. Tied. Connecticut, a hair breadth from the yeah. final four a year yeah. ago. Very yep. young team yep. and right on the edge right now. Jim Calhoun's got eight uh, freshmen, five sophomores, a walk-on junior, and a walk-on senior. The league right now, I don't know if it's at that powerful a league this year, but there's so many good young players and good young teams. Both of these teams have, uh, have good young players and a limited amount of seniors. All right, this is crucial. You can't, can't run the baseline. Cherry gets it inbounds. Uh, actually, McDermott, they burn another time, and somebody's not coming through. McDermott had words with Efejuko. I thought you were going this way. He said, no, I was coming this way. So luckily, unfortunately for Tim Welch and company, they had timeout, but they're down to their final timeout right now. St. John's defense. Norm Roberts had a smile on his face when the Friars were forced to call a second timeout. They're quick, they're anticipating, and they've just stayed in so many games. They haven't won as many as they would like to, but they have ultimate respect for what they've done on the defensive end. Both teams have one timeout remaining. Well, third time's got to be the charm. The worst thing that could happen now is that you get a, uh, a violation on the baseline that would give St. John's a baseline inbound. Right, half court to inbound the play uh -huh. with. Let's see what they do here. Curry. Wow. They give an inbound to McDermott. They foul him, get it back to Curry, and Curry bumped by Mason Jr. With a little leg bump. He didn't move his feet. Third foul on Anthony Mason Jr. St. John's missed the opportunity. We talked about foul priorities at this point in the game. McDermott was just a 54% free throw shooter. And a sophomore was just you know, kind of in the middle there with the ball. Nobody took a shot at him. So Curry at the line where he is two for two. 88% on the season. Boy, a nice stroke. Cured that one as Pauly comes back in. I think he's second in the league in the Big East. That Ooh, is that, correct. See, that's... End the game situations, you know, just inches, millimeters. They had a poor free throw shooter, let him get away, and they sent the. Ooh, they made that an adventure. So now it's a five point game with 47 seconds to go. Providence should not job. foul under any circumstances. Lawrence sets up down the lane, but his contact, they let him play. Calhoun goes up and scores. 34 seconds to go. Curry. They chase him, kill some time, back to McDermott. Can they cut him off? He gets across, and a foul by Lawrence. Boy, what, what's left on the clock? Tw oh, four tenths of a second. From a 10 second viol... Go oh, on, a second and a half. A second and a half away from a 10 second violation. Whoa. <laughs> Curry is Close. so quick and could not make the turn. Again, McDermott handled the ball. They had a chance to stop it. Curry with the free throw, golf fans and club pros, not too early to start thinking about the 07 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com, register your team, or to sign up your course for qualifying site, be part of the search for America's Best Tucson. Five-point game, 26 seconds to go. Lawrence having a one-for-seven day. Mason, deep three, in and out. Over the top, that should do it, McDermott. Gets it cross court, there's a whistle. Lawrence didn't hear it. Clock stopped with 18-1. 10 rebounds for McDermott. I'm not sure they needed a three there. They're, you know, coaches vary on that. I, I think I would have gone back inside the Hamilton and uh, tried to get him on that free throw line and stop the clock, but Mason had a wide open three and he just hit one. So, uh, you know, choose your poison. Jeff McDermott, 12th in field goal percentage number one in assists free throw short just 54 percent recruited by uh, Rutgers in Wisconsin and Syracuse all for football but he wanted to play basketball 
18-1 to go, so that free throw goes. And seven. Now they need three. Sure do. Six points. Lawrence sets up Mason. Calhoun, good D by Providence. Fade away. Oh, he hit it with 8-1. Timeout, St. John's. That is their last timeout. Oh, my. And that was under duress, boy. He had his tonsils checked on that one. Providence could not have done any more than they did without fouling. Watch this. He went, it is. Boy, good reset. Yeah, got his legs great, under him. Great pump fake, and he got he just gathered again. Oh. Calhoun well with done. a big three is 12th of the season, 28%. He's coming off again, that big game Thursday night against Rutgers. 13 and 7. Yeah. He had 18 at Cincy. Guy can score. Opportunities, you know, this 6 8 freshman, Hazlitt, New Jersey, by way of Bridgeton Academy of Maine, the Raritan High School. Well, the Friars have made inbounding the ball an adventure. They have one timeout remaining. Eight seconds to go, down three. They got to get it inbounds and hopefully get it to one of their better free throw shooters because they're going to be fouled immediately. Well, both teams are really getting it done free throw shooting today. Providence 16 out of 18, St. John's 15 out of 16. This was the last time you saw one of those. Uh, both long teams time. up it's, in the 90s. Yeah. It's unreal. Well, and then again, Providence did not go to the free throw line in the first half. So right. The, the two had, the second half was a Big East game. I'm not sure. I'm not, maybe it was a little <laughs> fatigue coming <laughs> off those Thursday night games. I don't know, but. Boy, this one, uh, the second half got this this crowd, and Providence crowds are good. They're, they're good fans. Well, I did a Providence roadie game here one time. Whoa, uh, you uh, talk uh, about uh, no love loss. Yeah. That's like Duke, Carolina. <laughs> yes, sir. Eight miles apart. You got to look at them all the time. They get it in bounds. No foul. With 5-4, they finally give it foul. Fourth on Mason. Mason, 7 of 17 today, 19 points. Hamilton leads the Red Storm with 20, 14 for Calhoun. Efajuku, 20 for Providence, 18 for Curry, 16 for Herbert Hill. 79% free throw shooter. It's about as good as you can get, Coach Tim Welsh. Efajuku, three for wow. four. <laughs> this, if Providence can prevail here, it starts at the first of a three, three game homestand that could generate the momentum to get the Friars to 20. Efajuku with 20 points. Shoot for the cap runner right there. Five points with five seconds to go. 22 for Epijuku. Lawrence going to take it all away, leave it for a Hamilton. Clock runs out, and that'll do it. Ten consecutive wins by Providence over St. John's. Today, 71-66. Providence goes to 16-9 and nine overall, 6-6 six and six in the Big East. St. John's drops to 15-12 and 12 overall, 6-8 in the Virginia. Big East. As it starts to get very interesting as we get closer to the Big East tournament in New York City. Coach, a pleasure as always. Stay warm down in Carolina, all right? I'm going to do that. Thanks. It was a good one. Well, so the final score, the Providence Friars, 71, St. John's 66. Join us next Saturday. Cincinnati takes on DePaul at 12 noon. Check your local listings for Bucky Walters. And our entire ESPN Plus crew, I'm Dave Sims. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, everybody.